Slittus. AKA Spawn of the Slittus. Spawn of Slittus. I just refer to it because that's the the poster art, the newspaper ad, everything just uh, it, everything the, about it. When you called the, when yeah. you called the Rolling Hills twin, they didn't say Spawn of Slittus. Yeah. They said Slittus plays tonight at seven thirty. No, it's a very traditional monster. That's the best thing about the movie. Yeah. All right, is the, that it's a proper monster. <laughs> the thing that's interesting about Slittus is the idea that okay, so he's he is this gilly amphibian type of creature that. That's to be sure. Slow moving out of water. But he's not just the amphibian fish that either the humanoids from the deep are or that uh, the gill man is in, in uh, Rico Browning's uh, version of the creature. Uh, instead, there's the, every indication that he's made up of shit and scum. Just garbage. Yeah. There is a garbage aspect to the creature. Just- Okay, so there's a lot of scientific mumbo jumbo about how the slittus came about. And I'm sure all of it makes sense. Yes, I'm sure. It, no, I'm sure it does, as a matter of fact. It's, it's, it's too dense, all right, to not make sense. It, but what the movie is, is a pretty decent little monster movie that takes place in Venice, California. Uh, and Venice is shot as well as it's ever been shot. It even deals with Venice nightlife, Brennigan's, which was a big bar at the time. That that is it actually one of has the-, the turtle races. It's, it's so specific to the city of Venice that it practically almost qualifies as regional filmmaking. Yeah. It's not well shot in this sequence, but there's a scene where uh, the Dr. John character, who's like their, <laughs> their, their expert guy that they got, the two leads, the, the, the boring lead guy, and then his really groovy girlfriend, who I really like a lot. He shows up to, to talk about the Slittus, and they, they're in one of the most perfect 70s Marina Del Rey yeah. apartments I've ever seen in a movie. Every book in the shelf, every record, every, every bead curtain, all right, just uh, every pottery plant. Every hanging, candle. Ha- hanging from a yarn. Yeah, macro- hang- macrame. Macrame <laughs> hanging thing. Yeah, all right, shag carpets. Is just perfect, all right? The couch and the, the designs yeah. on the couch are just, I mean, but that apartment in particular, it's like, oh man, if I was doing a movie in this era, I yeah. would just show this scene to the production manager and just say, production designer, just do this, do yeah, this. Yeah. The monster aspect of it is that there's this uh, a creature named Slittus that has gotten some radioactivity from a leaking power plant. A smarmy guy who's like my least favorite character in the whole movie. All right. Uh, he's, a jur- he's a journalist. Uh, a professor. journalist teacher in a high school. And he starts hearing about the, these murders happening, and he starts putting two and two together, and then he starts trying to investigate them. Bert. Well, the guy's not a terrible actor. He's not necessarily good. He's not necessarily bad. He's kind of a putz in the movie. They're kind of sexy together. They're yeah. they're good together. But then he starts meeting these other characters that start becoming like, you know, surrogates for the characters in Jaws. There's the, the Dr. John character that can figure out aspects about Slittus. Yeah, and then the, there's the a, sort of the Quinn character. Yeah. The and then there's a Quinn character, this like black Jamaican guy. All right. He's yeah. got a fishing boat. And uh, so they're all going to team up together and, and, and put Slittus down. But there's a plethora. A kaleidoscope. Of, of, of secondary <laughs> characters. Yeah. That are all given a shocking amount of depth. A day player will show up. And then just in the little bit of dialogue they have, just reveal a character trait or something important about their life. And it's it's not crammed in, but it's just like, oh, wow. OK, now you left that character and the character was just a function for two seconds. But I kind of know more about that secondary character than I know about the lead character. OK, him doing obviously it was obviously in Vietnam, him doing a rant about the horrors in Vietnam. That would be one thing. That that fits into the thing and give the nom vets some dialogue. To bring up Australia for just one line in a weird way suggests an entire life. Yeah. You know, he's a he's a smoothie. You know, he's a he's a lounge lizard guy. If he's not at Brendan's, he's at uh, uh, Tequila Willie's. If he's not at Tequila Willie's, he's at the Red Onion. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> and he's a you know, he's a swinging single type guy in the seventies. In he's the seventies, the, 70s. Pants, the yeah. everything. The he's, got, he's, got, he's got everything except the right car. All right, he's in a shitty blue bug. And then like you know, they're talking. She's from Saskatchewan or something. Yeah, she's and, from like somewhere far away. No, it's like this long, involved story about how she came to Los Angeles. Yeah, every way, shape, and form. It's a Paul Thomas Anderson scene. All right, you know. This is this entire section of the movie could have been ripped from the guts of uh, Licorice Pizza. So he has a couple of young kids come up to him. Hey, 
Mr. Blah, 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 whatever it is. Listen to this. There's, there's been a murder in Venice. He was like, oh, well, thanks a lot, girls. You know, uh, he, he kind, goes, of, kind hey. of smirks. At the, yeah. And goes, well, you know, and then like then he turns around and is like, you know, I think I'm going to investigate this. It doesn't give them any credit. And Mid movie, it, like deep, deep in the film. <laughs> He's with his girlfriend and then they get in the car. But their car is this cool 70s van. This is his car. Even in that situation, him being bitchy about the wife's dog. That makes sense for the situation going on. But then when I say this textual stuff off point is also in there as well, because the wife goes, well, honey, look, put on a robe. (laughs) You don't have to get dressed completely. Just put on a robe. Have you ever seen me in the five years we've been married ever put on a robe? When you bought me that robe, it was a complete waste of money and my time. I will never wear that robe no matter what I do. And then it's just when he sees what Slittis has done. To the screen door. To the screen door. Like, oh, that's it. (laughs) That's it. That's it. (laughs) Slittis could have a little bit more screen time. I will say that. He's, he's He's off picture a little too much. The end could have been a little better. The fight between them and, and the slittus on the boat could have been a, just a little better if, if it was just a little longer. No, like, look, you know, just 10 more minutes of slittus. It's a water amphibian creature. <laughs> it's dying right now. But <laughs> maybe if you kick it in the fucking water, all right, where it's from, it'll come back to life. And guess what? <laughs> I didn't mind the gotcha ending, though. 